Well, he's one of New Zealand's most respected broadcasters and sports journalists, and we've just been talking Lions. Now he's just released his <laughs> 25th book, Looking After Your Nuts and Bolts, Kiwi Men's Health Guide, which he says is the most important book he will ever write. To tell us why, please welcome to the cafe, Phil Gifford. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is your 25th book. Yes, it is. Yes. That's quite an achievement. Yeah, I suppose it is, actually. I didn't think about that. It's a silver jubilee or something. Isn't it? <laughs> it makes it even more special. Yeah. Um, but you say it's the most important book you've ever written. Yeah. I mean, look, I've loved every book that I've written, actually enjoyed the process, done done books with some lovely people like Dame Valerie Adams, The Mad Butcher, Toddy Blackadder, and so on. But this is the first book I've written that... and I, <laughs> I'm embarrassed because these words are so pretentious, but they are about to come out of Go my on, mouth. Go on, you do it. I think this is the first actually really important book I've ever written because right. this book... Um, it took me two years for a start, and usually I do a sports book in about six months. It took me two years for a start, but the most important thing is, during that time, I interviewed, I think it was 12 men and women who are absolute experts in their field of medicine, if you like, or medical experts. Also talked with, I think it was 15 or 16 men who had actually been through the process with various illnesses and diseases and come out the other side. And why I say it's, I, I think it's important is that if guys read it, and I really hope they do, um, I think it, w it might literally save, save some of their lives, lives you know, yeah. which, is, which is a hell of a big statement to make. But mm. when, very briefly, the one lesson that I hadn't really realised was how, if you're diagnosed early, um, because men live on average four years less than women do in New Zealand because we don't look after our health as well. But if you're diagnosed early, for example, bowel cancer, if you're diagnosed early, there's a 99% cure rate now, 99% right. if you're diagnosed early. If you leave it too late, you're getting down into the 25% survival rate. So if you read the book and if you follow some of the advice, which we've really tried to put in a non-threatening, non-aggressive, easy to digest way. Got well, well, that, well, that's what I like, Phil, because There's it's pictures not... pictures in there too. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well it's yeah. not a book that says, you know, go for a run every morning and drink a kale smoothie, is it? It's a bit no, more deeper than that. It is. And uh, look, one of the things about it is, is that if there's one single piece of advice that I, that I think, I hope, that men take from it, it's have a doctor, especially once you reach a certain age. In general, it's probably at about 50. You should be, whether you're feeling ill or not, you should be going once a year to your doctor for a full checkup. So he and, he and she then has a baseline to see how your health is getting on. Mm. Family history is important. If you have a, if unfortunately you have a family history of prostate cancer, bowel cancer, diabetes, whatever, then it's probably those checks should be starting at 40. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's not a difficult process, really, going to a doctor. But Kiwi guys don't go to the no, doctor. They, they have that real sort of quintessential she'll be right, mate, sort of attitude, yep. don't they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, that's certainly part of it. I think part of the other thing is too, and, and it's interesting, some of the very macho men that, are, that I spoke to for the book, uh, like Walter Gill, whose son Jacko is the great shot putter. Walter himself uh, was a New Zealand discus champion, and he is a, still in his 60s, a massively strong guy that works in a concreting firm uh, that, that he and Simon Gundry run. Anyway, Walter says he would go to a doctor because he couldn't bear the thought of hearing bad news. He said pain <laughs> wasn't the issue. The other thing too I've got to tell you that guys are just ridiculous about yeah. is prostate checks, right? right? Prostate checks. Now, the interesting thing, more mature gentlemen, when they found out I was writing a book about men's health, that I knew it would always come, the question would come, Oh, you're doing a chapter on uh, prostate cancer? <laughs> yes, I am. What about those checks? You can just get a blood test now, can't you? And I had to break the news to them. Well, actually, you know what? The blood test is a good indication for a doctor. But you go to your GP and ask him or her what they think. But there's a fairly good chance that at some stage there will be a physical examination. The glove on. Yeah. Exactly. You'll hear the snap of the rubber glove. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've also said to guys, and we write about it in the, in the book, is that keep in mind that the urologist is enjoying it just as much as you are, which is not at all. <laughs> and in fact, I spoke at a urologist conference in Hamilton where this lovely bloke said to me, well, you know, Phil, you should know that we want to, uh, we know it's embarrassing for blokes, and so we do it as quickly and as seamlessly as we can. And he said, also, it's not fun for us, but as, they, as we say uh, amongst urologists, for us, 
the first 20,000 is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> See, and this is why women shake their heads at men who, when yes. you don't go to the doctors and you don't these tests exactly. because we have we have pap smears Absolutely. regularly and we sort of just, just suck it up and get on with it. Absolutely. And I mean, my, my wife Jan said to me when, when I was writing about the prostate Baby. checks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like when Jan had, <laughs> Jan was first in a maternity ward, which was a couple of years ago, uh, <laughs> the, uh, apparently the, the sister, the ward sister said to her, there's a coat hook over there, love, put your coat and your dignity on that and we'll give them back to you when you're finished. You know, <laughs> so. up there with flashlights having a good old look. Exactly. So, I mean, I mean I, I, look, a lot of the medical people that I, that I talk to for the book, nobody can exactly explain why guys are so remiss about going and looking after their health and going to doctors. Uh, but, I mean, one of the theories I have is that with more mature women, there's a chance they'll have had a baby. And so they've been through very intimate, possibly embarrassing examinations. Guys, on the other hand, we don't have the babies. We just go, oh, that's good, yeah, look, there's a baby. <laughs> but, but and, and, and that's possibly why that we, we, we don't make the effort to go and get properly checked. Is there something wrong with, I guess, the, the culture of men in this country, that sort of macho staunchness attitude which stops them from wanting... Because you look, you look at, the, you know, Mr Gill. I mean, he had chest pains for a very long time. That's right. Didn't even know what it was, just thought it was heartburn. That's right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Taking you know, my lantern all the time. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And, and blokes in New Zealand continue to do this. Yep. They just go, oh, we'll be right, it'll be right. I'll, need to, I'll go to the doctor when I need to go. Well, yep. you need to go before you die. Totally. <laughs> Helps. Well, there, there is absolutely no question that one of the things is, and, and again, with a couple of the medical people I spoke to, if you're a woman listening to this and your husband or your boyfriend or your brother or your dad is giving it that, oh, nothing wrong with me, oh, I've never had to go to a doctor, I'm still around, and you're trying to get him there, pretend it's a sports chick. Pretend it's a sports doctor because guys will go to somebody if they believe, yes, well, this person, I understand this person uh, used to be an assistant doctor at the All Blacks. It might be a lie. Right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I love but, it. <laughs> but they're much more likely to get along. And, and, oh, just, and, and as, as it happens, it's actually not a fib. The chapter on um, sort of fitness in, in the book uh, was actually done by a lovely bloke, Nick Gill, who actually is right. the strength and fitness trainer for the All Blacks. So oh, oh that, that's, that's great genuine. credibility right there. I must ask you just quickly, what? You, so you're, you're not a health expert yourself, are no, you? No, so uh, absolutely not. I mean, one of the things that, that, was, that was delightful was that the people who were experts, and every single person quoted in that book, and it was also peer-reviewed by three other medical people before it went in, every single medical expert kept saying to me, for God's sake, don't write it like a medical journal would. Right. Write it so guys can understand it. But I feel totally relaxed about the accuracy mm -hmm. because, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a dumb... Uh, I might say dumbass. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just a, I'm just a sports journalist. But I would also like to think maybe that I ask the dumb questions that guys would be too yeah, embarrassed to ask. Brilliant. A toilet book, that's what I call it. It's one that you put beside yep. the toilet and that, right. that's where men do their reading, yes, isn't it? true. Yeah, yeah. Totally. No, well, yeah. great. No, I love the way you've done it. Some great stories, some great Thank characters you. and some great advice. So let's hope it does save some lives, Phil. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Looking after your nuts and bolts is out now in all good bookstores, so go and get it for your toilet and you can pick yourself up a coffee. <laughs>